Pronto! This is the land of my ancestors. My father, of course, as everyone knows, was Nkosi Matole Butelezi, uh, the son of Mkandumba, the son of Myamana, who was King Tejoya's Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief of the Forces. And my mother, of course, was Princess Constance Makoko Mantiti Sbili Lengange Zinye, a full sister to King Solomon Gatini Zulu. His brother, King Solomon, is the one who gave my age sister to my father to marry. Prince Mangasutu Butalezi had a very special relationship with his mother, and he regularly visits her grave to show his respect. I always say, without any hesitation, that everything that I know about Zulu history and Zulu culture are things that I learned on my mother's knee. Prince Mangasutu Butelezi is a proud member of Zulu royalty. He takes a keen interest in the culture and history of his people. When time allows, he visits the scenes and sites of historical interest and passes his knowledge on to the next generation. This land and the people of this land, the entire South African nation of people of all races and cultures are my people that I've served, you know, with, for more than 60 years and which I'm very privileged to serve for the rest of my life. Prince Mangosu Tubu Teles is first and foremost a Zulu, but uh, he is a South African in the truest sense of the world. Nor does he only serve the Zulus. As a leader, he is respected by all South Africans. To fulfill his long-standing love for his people, Prince Mangasutu Botelezi, after successfully completing his tertiary education, decided to enter into politics. After holding several positions, he became Chief Minister of the Self-Governing Territory of KwaZulu in 1976. He consistently declined homeland independence. For him, there was to be no political deals with the Nationalist Party government, at least not before Mr. Nelson Mandela was released. It is common knowledge that Prince Wangusutu Butelezi fought on principle for many years for the release from prison of Mr. Nelson Mandela. Our Chief Whip is absolutely right that it was a matter of principle for me that Mr. Mandela be released. Not only because he was one of my leaders, because I grew up in the African National Congress myself and we were together in the African National Congress Youth League, but because he was also a personal friend. In fact, he was a very close friend of my in-laws as well. And in fact, I have this unique privilege that I'm one of the few people that he corresponded with until 1989 when he was about to, release, to be released. And I also have the distinction of having campaigned for his release you know, more than anyone, I can say so, without any fear of contradiction. When Mr. P. W. Porter then resigned and, and Mr. F. W. Clegg took over, 
he approached me and said that we should now sit and, and, and actually uh, negotiate the future. And I said to him, under no circumstances would we negotiate unless Mr. Mandela was released, unless other prisoners were released, unless exiles returned. So for me, that, that was non-negotiable. So therefore, it was not surprising to me that when Mr. de Klerk in February 1990 announced the easy decision to release Mr. Mandela, that he actually, I'm the only person that he mentioned by name as having assisted him to reach that decision. While many leaders of the ANC were in exile and in prison, it was Prince Mangasutu Butelezi who proudly carried the flag in the struggle against apartheid. Throughout the struggle years, Prince Mangasutu Butelezi consulted with international leaders, amongst them leaders of African states, drawing from their experience and following advice when he deemed it in the interest of his people. President Kaunda said to me, they, as heads of state in Africa, appreciate the amount of work I'm trying to do in pursuing the, the struggle for the liberation of my people here. But he said to me, his advice was, that in order to be a cohesive force, I must find a membership-based organization. And because even then we were still communicating with, with Mr. Tambo, I told him that I now wanted to found this organization. And then Mr. Tambo nodded, he said, yes, I must go ahead. He thinks that it's good advice. Then I founded Inkata Enkulego Esizu, National Cultural Liberation Movement in English. So then what happened then is that Bishop Alpheus Hamilton Zulu, who was my mentor, actually suggested the, the use of Inkata because there had been an old Inkata of the Zulus. But this was no, was no longer Inkata of the Zulus. It was Inkata Yenkulewe Sizu. To the extent that in 1977, I was invited in Pretoria by the minister, Minister, minister Jimmy Kruger, who was minister of police and, you know, at that time. And he texted me on the fact that Inkata, even at that time, when it was only two years, was actually enrolling not only Zulu-speaking people, but also Africans of other ethnic groups. And he said to me, he would take action against me because I was polarizing people if I do this, if I include others. So I said, well, Minister, in the National Party, we have got whites of all ethnic groups. Oh, he said to me, well, you must remember they were all of Teutonic origin. So I said, is it so? So I said, what about the Jews, minister? Of course, he was blank. He just looked at me. So I said that as long as the initial party drew into its fold, whites of all ethnic groups I had the same right. And I was not intimidated by the minister. So then Inkata then operated... In fact, we, we revived the colors of, of the black people of South Africa, you know, black, green, and gold. In fact, when I became then the chief executive councillor of KwaZulu and I was required to have a national anthem, I said, our anthem is in Kosi Singelela. Of course, the Department of Native Affairs, of Wandu Affairs, said that it was a, a trans. A, 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 that was actually a national anthem for, for the trans guy. I can't have it. I refuse to have any other. So all along, in, we popularized both in, in Kosigale, Africa, and Morena Buluka, in all our rallies and meetings, etc. Prince Mangasutu Butelezi always made it clear that political change in South Africa was to be achieved through negotiations and not by means of violence or sanctions. These views brought him in conflict with the ANC leadership. The big rapture, of course, happened in 1979 when I went to London uh, at the request of Mr. Tambo. That meeting was attended also by our future president, Mr. Mbegi. For, for two and a half days, we discussed only these two issues sanctions and disinvestment against South Africa, and the armed struggle, so-called. 
We debated this and we couldn't reach an agreement that we, we as Inkata would participate either in the armed struggle or also to, to support sanctions and disinvestment against South Africa. So then the exchange of emissaries that had been going on between me and Mr. Tambo ceased then. And then, of course, attacks on me were, 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 were there even before, but at this time, I would say the sluice gates were opened. I was attacked internationally and, and portrayed everywhere as a sellout and, 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 a, and, a, and a lack of apartheid, you know, merely because I rejected the strategy, strategy of, of the ANC of disinvestment and sanctions and also of the armed struggle. Uh, Shanga has been a formidable survivor. We have destroyed all uh, the other leaders of the Pantustans, of the homelands. We have used every am ammunition to destroy him, but we have failed. And uh, he is still there. As I say, he is a formidable survivor. We cannot ignore him. This is quite apart from the position that he played in the government of national unity. As an individual politician, he has been a powerful person. So, anyway, when I founded Inkata, I stated very clearly that it was structured on the ideals of the ANC as propounded by the founding fathers in 1912, which was, for, of course, negotiation, you know, and non-violence. That is the strategy. That is why one of my mentors, in course, Albert Lutuli, got the Nobel Peace Prize. Because the ANC was committed to that. The founding fathers founded the ANC on that basis that there had been enough bloodshed in this country in all the wars that took place before and that there was no need now to resolve our problems through arms. So I stuck to that strategy to the end. So, in fact, it was most interesting to me that at one time, Mr. Mandela was being maligned because already he was already talking to Minister Kutsi and others while he was in jail, which is exactly what I was being vilified for. So, I was very, very happy now when we started, when what I had said actually won the day, when Campton Park talks took place, you know, when negotiations took place around the table, when I was proven right, when in fact I, I came out as the person and the party and the, and the body that actually stuck to, to the ideals of the founding father of 1912 in that we rejected the arms struggle and we, we rejected sanctions and in disinvestment. So then after negotiations then, there was going to be an election. So Inkata then had to become a political party. So he then became Inkata Freedom Party. Prince Mangos Tupteli is a stand South Africans and noble work by standing so firm against sanctions and, and violence during the apartheid era. Uh, Prince Mangos Tupteli has been proved right because violence in this country has caused more than 20,000 lives. And with regard to uh, sanctions, unemployment as poverty has gone so high. I am very glad that uh, during the days of the struggle for freedom that Prince Mangasutu Butelezi fought against the imposition of sanctions on South Africa because he knew very well and history proves him right that ordinary people would have lost their jobs and that's exactly what has happened. I admire the, the, the stand that the Prince actually took because he was vindicated because if you ask me how this new freedom that we're talking about came, in, came about, it came through negotiations because he had said that the only way out is not violence, but it is through negotiations that this country will be liberated. And indeed, that is exactly what happened. We are happy that you know, South Africa's liberation did not come through the barrel of the gun and violence. It came through negotiations and discussions as the IFP had been advocating. Um, obviously, we refused to have 
uh, discussions while some of the other liberation activists were either in prison or in exile. And so we campaigned, you know, 100% to ensure that we had an all-inclusive negotiation process so that at the end of the day, the outcome could be owned by all South Africans. And that's the freedom and democracy we enjoy today. So the IFP stands against violence and shall continue doing so. Prince Mangasutu Butelezi was proved right on his stand against sanctions. The ANC today follow his lead when they oppose sanctions against Zimbabwe. History has vindicated the prince. Prince Butelezi, the president of the Nkata Freedom Party, is a Christian. And being a Christian, he has principles which he pushes forward. And those principles are a lot of the Christian principles where he strives towards seeing to it that harm does not come to the people, especially when it comes to a lot of the bodily harm, the mental harm, the physical harm, and the spiritual harm. He is a leader who strives for ensuring that none of the people are actually harmed in any way. I don't think that uh, people should be surprised that uh, uh, by my dependence on God, my belief that we should we depend on God. Because I grew up in the African National Congress, the African National Congress was founded by Christians. In fact, the very first president is someone I knew very well, the Reverend John Langalbala Letube, who was an ordained minister of the United Congregational Church, and others led Congress.